This screencast is on the CSS fundamentals. So it assumes that you don't really have uh, a deep understanding of CSS, and it's going to go over the basics of what CSS is and how to write some very basic CSS. All right. So um, let's start with the basics of CSS. What is it? It controls the design of your web page. So comparing it to HTML, CSS controls how it looks, the visual design, the layout, the topography, and the colors, whereas the HTML it just marks what is it, the content, the structure of the items, uh, the resources that are in there like images and audio and CSS files and JavaScript and so forth. Ultimately, visual design is something that communicates a message, and this is really the goal of our CSS. We're not really going to get into that today. So this presentation is not about the visual design. You kind of have to know the basics of how to apply CSS to a page, and then you can get to the real job of CSS, which is that visual design communicating a message uh, to the user uh, and styling your content so that it does its best job of it. So again, this is just the basics of CSS and how to apply them to an HTML page. So there's a few big ideas we're going to cover. The first one is that CSS helps you to separate the content from the design on the page. And this is a big goal in, in web design because uh, HTML is really just about content and so um, and, and CSS is about design and so if you can separate those two out it makes it a lot more flexible in the end and it's also easier to work on larger teams. So how do you do that? Well one way you can separate the two is to not use inline styles. That's in your HTML using the style attribute and styling some HTML that way. If you use that, then now your design is right there in the HTML page. Another one is to not use the font element. So a font element is another way that you know people style the page and it's uh, basically on its out um, and, and not considered a great thing to use anymore. And just sort of overall not to use anything in the HTML that controls things CSS can control. Colors, fonts, borders, etc. And we'll see in later videos, this, this video is not going to really talk about layout, um, but one of the big other things is to not use tables for your layout because now you're using the HTML to control the layout of the page as opposed to using CSS in your style sheets to control the layout. So really the HTML is really just supposed to mark things up and say what they are and then the CSS in a separate file will control what it is. Uh, one exception um, in terms of talking about width and height and things are with images. Uh, you can set the width and height of images in the HTML. That's considered okay. Also, in certain cases, it can help speed up the, the rendering of the page because the browser knows how big of a space to leave for that. Remember, it's going to render all your HTML first, uh, the text, and then it will ask for the images and other things second. So it sort of has to leave a space when it knows an image is going to go there and then place that image in. If you give it the width and the height, it can do that. If you don't, it has to figure out later how big that image is. So another thing you can do though, a thing you can do, is use external style sheets. And in all the videos and things that I'm going to show you, that's the only way I'm going to do it, is to write your CS, our CSS in a separate external style sheet. Um, and this is an example of a link that would go in your HTML element. As you see there on, in the index.html, this link element would go there, and it's going to refer to that styles.css file. And if you want to refer to a different file in that href attribute you see there, where it says equals CSS slash styles.css, you would just refer to another one. And re remember, we do have to write CSS slash because that styles file is in a CSS folder. So it's telling it go to the CSS folder and then get the styles.css file. And this is the way we'll do it. So all your HTML is in that HTML file, uh, in this case index.html, and then your CSS is in a styles.css. One other nice thing we'll find is that when we do it this way, we can associate that same CSS file with all of the HTML files on our, on our page. So we don't have to keep rewriting over and over the same CSS. You can kind of do it once and then use it on all the pages in your site. So the other things we want to do are classes and IDs. And we'll talk more about that later, but this is another way that you can sort of connect the two. There's never any way you can completely separate the two, right? Because the CSS has to know a little bit about the HTML uh, and, and vice versa, um, 
but this is one nice way we can do it where we can just give things names essentially IDs and classes and then we can style that later in our CSS so the second big idea is rules right and rules are essentially what CSS is about this is an example of a rule the whole thing is a rule right we'll break down the, the, the pieces of it too because those are some of the other ideas we're going to cover all right so a styles a CSS when we talked about that styles that CSS it's really just a file that is a set of rules that's all it's in it. it's just a bunch of rules that are given there and the computer will go through and apply those rules to any page with which that CSS file is associated so in that link tag when we associate that CSS it tells the computer to go out look at those rules and apply those rules to all the markup on the page so let's look closer at the anatomy of a rule the first thing is a selector, and we're going to talk more about those later, and that selects which element you're going to apply the CSS to. And it, after the selector, you have a curly brace that opens, and then another one that closes. And inside of those are where all the other pieces of it go that we're going to talk about now. So a selector, you have your selector, and then you have your opening, closing curly braces. And inside those curly braces, you have declarations. This is an example of one declaration. You can have basically as many as you want. Um, so a declaration is essentially saying, OK, in this rule for this selector, I'm declaring this. And declarations are made up of two parts, properties, which are essentially what you're changing. Uh, and then you have colon. So it's property, colon and then value. So what am I changing it to? So in this case, I'm changing the color property of a P element to the value FF0000, which if you didn't know in hex value is essentially red. And then at the end we have a semicolon. It's important that you keep all these pieces because just like most parts with computers, if you miss one little thing, like a semicolon here or a colon there, CSS gets confused, doesn't know what's going, and basically just sort of throws its hands up and it's like, I don't know, I'm stopping, and it doesn't do any more of the other rules on your page. So it sort of starts at the top of the page and applies your rules as you go along. If it hits an error and doesn't, it gets confused, it just stops. So those are our important pieces to remember. The curly braces that go um, after the selector and around the rest of the rule. The colon that separates your property from your value, and then the semicolon at the end of the value. So the third big idea we have are selectors. And we just talked about that, but we want to get into those in a little bit more detail. Because this is sort of one of the big pieces of CSS in terms of applying it right and, and, and learning about it. So remember from HTML that all content on the page must be in an element. So you can't just have content sort of floating out there. It has to be in an element. And so our CSS selectors essentially select elements. Right? They target elements and say, I want to style the content inside of it with the declarations that you have that have the um, exact things that you want to style about that. So the selector says, here's the element I'm or elements I'm going to target on the page. So we have an example here. Here's an element with some content inside of it. And you can select the entire paragraph. That was actually the one we saw there, where you use P as a selector. So one way to select an element is to just write the name of that element. This one is P, you would write P. If it was an H1 element, you could write H1. If it was a block quote, you would write block quote. Whatever it happens to be, you can just write that. What you can't do with CSS is just select a piece of content inside that. So I just can't select the word inside as it's currently written. However, if you do want to select that word inside of the paragraph, you can put some more tags around it because we can select tags. So now if I put, let's say, B tags around it, now I could select the B element uh, and use that in my selector and style that inside. So you'll see sometimes you, have to, you do have to end up putting tags around things. Um, just for your styles, but we try to avoid that a little bit, and there's a few tricks that we have. We'll learn much more in other videos. These are the basics.
So there's three basic kinds of selectors. There's actually a lot more. These three basic kinds are my personal opinion. So you may have a slightly different opinion or someone may have told you something else. But for me, when you're beginning, these are the ones to to get. Uh, and there's a fourth one I will show you a little later on that's really more of a grouping one, not a, um, a big difference. So the first one is selecting all instances of an element. Uh, the, and we're going to go through each of these individually. How to uh, use classes and IDs, and then elements inside other elements. So let's look at all instances of an element. So in this case, when I say P, it's going to go through and look for all P elements and apply that style to all those P elements. So this time it's color red, so all those paragraphs, all the text inside of them, would be red, or whatever other declarations I decided to make um, using that selector, it would apply those to all paragraph elements on the page. So that's a pretty easy one. You just look at the name of the tag that's written on the page. If it said, like if I wanted to style it H2 there, I would just write H2 instead of P. So the second kind are elements with a class on them. So here I did a note class. And you notice it's slightly different how you write it in the CSS versus the HTML. So on the HTML on the right, you see P space class equals note. Um, that's giving it a class of note. On the left, to do it, you use the dot. So dot note means look for something with a class of note. And classes you can apply to any any element you want on the page. So I could have I put it to a P element here, but you could put it to one of the Bs, the H2, anything inside the body. Remember, we're only dealing with things inside the body, by the way. Those are what's displayed. Um, so any of those things inside the body, I could apply a class to. I can apply it one time on the page, 15 times on the page. It doesn't matter. So you, it's a good way to, if you want to select specific paragraphs or specific things on the page, you can add class and, and apply those classes to those elements, all with the same attribute, class equals, and then the class name. Another one is with um, IDs. An ID should only be applied once on a page. So only one time should you apply an ID to a page. Um, and that says that this element is very special. An ID is sort of like giving an element a specific name that says there's one of these on the page. If I want to mark something else, I can't use special again. I'd have to come up with another name if I wanted to use another ID. So IDs, the main difference between classes and IDs, their IDs can only be applied to one element on the page, whereas classes can be applied to as many elements as you like. And then, of course, the IDs have the pound sign in front of them in your CSS when you're using it, so it knows you're talking about an ID versus a class. Another thing that you can do is say, I only want to select this element if it's inside of another element. So the first one we see here, H2 space B, will only apply to B elements that are inside of an H2 element. All the other Bs you see on the page, this rule doesn't apply to them. It only applies to that specific one because it's inside of an H2 element. That's the same here. All the, the P space B applies to these four Bs inside of paragraph elements, and only those, not to the other uh, H2B before it. So it's just saying only style this element that's inside of another element. And you can actually chain this. If I did space something else, it would, it would you know, if I had A space B space C, it would only apply it to a C element inside a B element that was inside of an A element, like that. Uh, the big idea number four is that getting to the last part of our CSS, which is declarations. So this is where sort of the meat comes in terms of actually changing how something looks. It's actually how you style the content. So again, on the left there is our selector. That's what I'm going to style. And then there on the right is a declaration. Well, how am I going to style it? So remember, selectors say, well, what am I styling on the page? And then now our declarations tell us, do the actual styling. And that's broken down into properties and values. So the property um, is, is, again, sort of like, well, what kind of thing am I styling? The color, the size, the font, so forth. And then the value, what value am I giving that? You know, so it's like when you're in Microsoft Word and you have a drop down that says font, and then you choose, you know, 15. Well, the property is the drop down part, and then, I mean, is the, you know, the name font, and then the value there is that drop down that you were choosing as to what value you want for it. And again, we also need our colon in between the property and the value and our semicolon at the end. So you can have more than one declaration inside of a rule. So here we have three that control the color, the font size, and the line height of this particular paragraph.
And of course, you can't remember all the properties and values. Um, you know, as you go along, you start to remember them just sort of as you work. Um, but it's always good, especially when you're first starting out, to just have a resource handy. So um, here's a few links. You can you could find your own or have those PDF files you can download. But it's a good idea to keep this handy, especially when you're first starting out. So when you're saying like, hmm, how do I change how big this font is or what font I'm using or how do I change the border on this, you can go and look it up and figure out what declarations you need to do to change that. So that's the end of this first video in CSS Fundamentals. In the second video we'll look at the very basic CSS you might use to get a presentable page. It's not going to get into everything you need for a full-blown web page, just what you need to style a basic, basic page.